Hey, welcome to Product Marketing Genius. I'm your host, Nitin Karthik. As director of product marketing, I always found that real world case studies are the true litmus test for the effectiveness of any product marketing strategy. And that is why in this show, we dive into the minds of industry titans, as well as rising stars, unpacking their expertise in action-packed episodes, showcasing the power of product marketing strategy through real world case studies. And my friends, today we are joined by product marketing genius, Alex Bearden, who is product marketing and go-to-market leader at Vertical. Alex is a top 100 product marketing influencer and has over a decade of experience in marketing, including six years serving as a product marketing leader. Her past roles include director of product marketing at Metadata, head of product marketing at Patient Pop, and many more. Alex has developed a reputation for building go-to-market strategies that result in revenue growth and customer engagement. As a product marketing leader at Vertical, Alex partners with founders, CMOs, and teams at B2B startups and B2C companies to refine brand, messaging, and positioning to build authentic connections with audiences. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Alex. It's an absolute honor. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here today and, and talk through a, a real life case study with you. Yes, indeed. And as promised to our audience, we're going to talk about a real life case study. So Alex, we're going to use the ABC framework. So we'll pick a situation from your experience. We'll talk about the antecedents or the challenges before. We'll talk about the behaviors or the actions that were taken. And then we'll talk about the conclusion, how the situation played out. So with that, Alex, pick a situation from your background and tell us what were the antecedents? What were the prior challenges? Yeah, of course. So something that's top of mind for me right now is pricing and packaging and an experience that I had a few months ago where we were starting to see that there was a challenge with the, the legacy pricing that we had. And it felt a little like people were throwing their um, finger up in the air and kind of changing pricing um, without the top line problem or hypotheses being really clarified and, and tested. And then the output of that was we were seeing a drop in new business, we were seeing churn rate spike, and we were also comparing that against the macro issues of, of uh, team sizes shrinking, revenue, or sorry, budgets shrinking, and the micro issues we were facing internally with not being able to get a handle on um, discounting or getting customers to see value for the price point, things like that. So we knew something had to change. Yes, and usually that's what the impetus is. When something has to change, that's when strategy is required. Wonderful, Alex. So thank you for explaining that. Now let's talk about the behaviors. Tell us about some of the actions that you engaged in. Sure. So the first step was pulling together a quick tiger team and with the founder, our CFO, and some other leaders to really talk through what were the ideas that they had that could be distilled into some frameworks that we could test in market, that we could look at against historical data and come up with um, a clear understanding of maybe the next best path forward instead of um, going on assumptions and um, not really taking a market first, customer first perspective when it came to pricing and packaging. So that initial groundwork laid the foundation for some of the maybe expectations that my key stakeholders had. Um, and then I went to market with a few hypotheses to test um, and better understand what customers were feeling, why customers were churning, what prospects were interested in when it came to the features and the, the steps up in, in the product and what was value to them. And then some of the folks that closed lost and how they didn't really see the value and what was amiss and what didn't align with what they were looking for, what their team needed, what their CFO expected from their marketing budgets. Um, and then on the inside, you know, looking at historical data, trends in usage, trends in contract sizing, understanding maybe the gaps we were having around discounting and trying to level that out so we could really see the right numbers that would give us the floor, an appropriate discount, 
and a way to charge customers appropriately based on the value that they needed from the platform. Um, and then I also, just out of my own curiosity, which ended up helping kind of um, back into some of the pricing perspectives, uh, did a broad survey of the market to understand how marketing technology budgets were shifting, how folks were viewing spending on tech, what levers were important, and what the buying cycle was. And we uncovered something very interesting that CFOs were now playing a massive role in uh, CMO's budget, a VP of marketing budget. And that helped us better inform our go-to-market approach when it came to not only aligning the new pricing packaging, but positioning it back out on the website, in sales decks, in pitches, um, to better smooth out the connection that a, a consensus deal would have to have in order to get this particular product to the finish line and, and get a closed one deal. Yeah, pricing is one of the most complex things when we're actually doing pricing. Uh, when we're trying to sell our product, you know, you don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold, you want it in that Goldilocks zone. So that's mm -hmm. that's really amazing. So tell us, uh, Alex, now that we've talked about the antecedents and the behaviors, tell us about the conclusion. How did the situation finally play out? Sure. So once we gathered all of that um, data from the field and we felt really good about a potential structure, it was time to test it. You know, um, a lot of times with pricing and what you'll see online is a lot of theoretical or um, best practices, maybe some B school kind of stuff. So we wanted to put it to the test. We pulled together a tiger team of some of our top sellers, trained them on what was new and helped them really facilitate these, um, these new initiatives in market to understand was it resonating? Where does a tweak need to be? Maybe um, should we do something different or pivot um, based on the feedback we're getting from real life prospects? Um, we tested, made adjustments. We were adjusting the website and other resources in real time and really creating that feedback loop across the go-to-market team helped us get a more um, data-focused approach to how we wanted to go to market when it comes to pricing and packaging and what were maybe some of the signals we needed to start looking at and how do we infuse what we're seeing when it comes to value um, back into the product team and back into the product to help with usage and that stickiness of the product to help you know play defense against churn or help folks understand why there might be a price increase at renewal things like that um, so then we enabled the larger team once we felt comfortable with the initial pricing pilot test and um, we kept the tiger team together so working again closely with the founder the cfo head of cs head of sales to really monitor the pricing the impact the rollout and what continued changes might need to be made you know a lot of people think pricing packaging is like okay i'm done we figured it out and it's really should be an ongoing process that you're constantly evaluating maybe not t making you know big swing changes or or even changes at all but just monitoring how um how it's impacting the business and if you're starting to see those signals again that potentially something needs to shift whether it be the package the price or even the positioning and messaging fabulous love it and I want to highlight one thing that you mentioned, which I think our audience would really take away, which is it's not a one and done. So <laughs> pricing, of course, it is complicated to get it right, but then it should be an iterative process where from time to time we refresh it. So love that. Uh, wonderful. Alex, thank you for telling us about that case study. Where can people find out more about you? And tell us, you also have an interest in vintage glass. Tell us more about that, Alex. Yes. All right. So I am chronically on LinkedIn. You can always find me there. Feel free to pop into my DMs anytime. I am currently building a larger website that'll have more of my portfolio and how to kind of get in touch with me if you want to consult. But for right now, my LinkedIn's the perfect place. Um, and then, yes, I am very interested in sustainable decor, de design, and I have a passion for vintage glass. So mid-century modern, depression era, even 80s and scarily enough 90s is now considered vintage decor so um i love it and i'm opening a little brick and mortar spot here in maryland um in the spring so super excited about that absolutely wonderful wow guys you better check out alex whether it is for product marketing or vintage glass you better go check her out so thank you alex this was absolutely fascinating and my friends with that let's make the magic happen <laughs>